Hi, good afternoon. Uh, so my case is uh, nothing to disclose about. My case is a 75-year-old hypertensive non-smoker, non-diabetic male who presented with dyspnea class 3, uh, for, uh, class 2 from last year, which increased from last 6 months to class 3, with the ejection systolic murmur in the aortic area, ECG shown the LVH with the strain pattern, and equal had no severe aortic stenosis with a bicuspid aortic wall, peak gradient of 66 with the ejection fraction of 45%. And its uh, CT, CT angiogram has uh, mentioned about the bicuspid type 1 aortic ward with a severe calcification of 1972 cubic millimeter. Height of the right and the left coronary is adequate. Uh, left is 13.1. Left coronary is cast length was 16.5. And adequately dilated sinus of well server with a left of 35.6. <coughs> So prior to TAVI, normal angiography, like, uh, both the right and the left. And then it's under sedation with the heparin 5000 unit. Uh, the wall was crossed, gradient was 60 millimeter, dilated with 20 millimeter balloon for annulus of 22. And then a little wall. At this point of time, the patient had no deterioration. So um, the blood pressure dropped down, patient become pacemaker dependent. Uh, so immediately the wall was deployed over here uh, with the pacing of the 180 BP at this moment of time is not recordable. And you see the left coronary is occluded even prior to the deployment of the wall. So this is what the right is flowing well. Patient was intubated, mechanical ventilation was started, uh, inotropic support was given, the blood pressure had no partial improvement, CPR was done, there was no peri. Initially we thought of possibly we had no rupture and uh, therefore the, we looked for the pericardial effusion which was not there. And then patient gradually started improving, the blood pressure came up, the normal sinus rhythm was there and it's the left coronary which is totally occluded. So it's a 6F guide uh, from the left femoral. We have given the additional heparin 2500 with the, with the Sion blue wire could cross the left main to LED dilated with 2.5 millimeter balloon. And then with the difficulty the LCS could also be rewired. Hurriedly, a 2.5 millimeter balloon dilatation followed by standing with 3.520 synergy stand across ostium. The LCX was done. And then there is again no flow across the LCX and also no flow across uh, the left system as such. Hurriedly, a 3.528 synergy stand was deployed as a chimney stand from uh, uh, wall to the LAD. And then there is no flow across the left circumflex after having a stand from left main to LAD. So it was rewired, uh, dilated with 2.5 across the left circumflex. Flow could be achieved. And then we had a 3 millimeter kissing balloon dilatation across the left main bifurcation with the, with the 6F guide catheter, which I did use. And I had a port with a 4.5 and uh, TMA3 flow was achieved across the left system. There is some hedginess at the ostium of the left circumflex, proximal part of the left circumflex for which terofibane infusion was started. At this moment of time, the reason for the left main occlusion couldn't be ascertained about, so we continue with it. Patient had a hemodynamic improvement, uh, local site was closed with a two par close. Extubated in one hour, ECO didn't show any pericardial effusion, the gradient was okay. CKMB was fine at 0, 6 and 12 hours. Ambulated after 48 hours and day 3, he was discharged. He remained relatively asymptomatic, ECO gradient was 21, 12 at follow-up and taken up for the check angiogram at 6 months of follow-up. So this shows the osteal uh, left circumflex, which is 90% stenosis. There is a mid LED, which is again having a 90% stenosis. And then there is a left main fracture, stent fracture. You can very well appreciate in the fluoroscopy over here. 
and this is the IBAS across the LED, which showed the MLA of 2.04 millimeters ac across the mid LED, and which was extended with 3 into 20 millimeters synergy stand. And this is the IBAS run across the left main. You can very well appreciate the stand fracture. This is evident over here now in the IBAS. And the and this is the stand fracture, which can be appreciated very nicely in the fluoroscopy as well. Couldn't pass the IVAS catheter across the LCX because of tight and angulated view, dilated with 2.53 millimeter balloon. Did the IVAS followed by 4 into 16 millimeter synergy stand from left main to LCX. And this time it's the 7F guide, which was used, so kissing balloon with 3.5 across the LED. 4 across the LCX and port with a 5 mm with a good nice result. We had a repeat IVAS to look for the optimization and there was a good area across the left main bifurcation. So in conclusion, this particular patient had a left coronary occlusion following balloon angioplasty, balloon, uh, balloon uh, valvuloplasty. The etiology can be very well discussed. I personally feel it's a calcium embolization uh, from the calcified aortic wall, but then it can be cuspal prolapse, left main dissection, and a successful bailout, left main bifurcation is stenting with a two stent. Six month follow up, I was guided repeat revascularization was done for the left main. In instant restenosis, that's how still L6, in instant restenosis, and patient had now asymptomatic two year of follow up. So this particular case we recently published in Cat Cardiovascular Intervention. Thanks for the kind attention.